It's actually Mobile Explosion. Um, I think we decided to call it that because over the last couple of days I've realized um, everything seems to be exploding and this may be a real watershed year for the mobile industry. It seems that the type and nature of devices is changing in a monumental way. The way that people consume the internet and the mobile internet is dramatically changing. Um, and so I thought this title was apropos. What's amazing to me is that, you know, even as a number of handsets and the technologies accelerate, the mobile community's ability to uh, keep acronyms to define everything keeps pace. And uh, I just want to applaud you guys. Uh, I actually thought uh, HSDPA was the most interesting acronym until LTE, which apparently is my uh, carrier's way of telling me that at uh, some point I'll be able to walk around my house and make a call on my iPhone. So thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> over the last couple of years at Facebook, we've been uh, working really, really hard to do one very simple thing, which is to allow every single person in the world the ability to connect, the ability to share information, the ability to relate to others, the ability to improve sort of their perception of what's going on in the world, not just uh, globally, but also most importantly in the world locally and around them. Um, interestingly, we've seen that very simple but very powerful thread cut across geographies, boundaries, languages, to a degree now where we have 400 million monthly active users on the website. What's amazing is that as we've done that, we've started to really invest now in the mobile parts of that experience. You know, we really have an ambition, as I said earlier, to make Facebook a completely ubiquitous service. What that means to us is there should be, will be, can be billions of people around the world using this thing over the next three to four years. In fact, what uh, I talk about to my team is the fact that we actually only have 0.4 billion users. And it helps us to draw the contrast of how much more work actually has to be done. The interesting thing is that mobile has been keeping pace in a profound way. Just last week, I announced that we passed a pretty meaningful milestone, which is that 100 million of our users, or 25% of our active user base, actually uses our mobile products actively every single month. What's almost equally interesting is the fact that the reach, actually, of Facebook mobile is 50% of our active user base. So 200 million people have actually interacted with our mobile products at least once in some form or fashion. The point is the following. Over the next five years, 10 years, we're gonna invest heavily in making our product as meaningful, as core, and as ubiquitous as possible to as many people in the world that we can. As we do that over the next couple of years, starting particularly in 2010, we're gonna to start to really dramatically invest in our mobile experiences. What I think that's gonna result in is the number of people that have interacted with Facebook mobile is gonna grow, not just obviously in the raw numbers, but as a percentage of our overall base. And the number of people that then actively use it every month is going to grow dramatically as well. This isn't just an opportunity for us, but I think it's a meaningful opportunity for every carrier in the world, every handset manufacturer in the world, and every developer in the world. To that point, the great news is that we wouldn't be in business if it weren't for the cooperation and the business that we've been able to do with a wide swath of carriers all over the world. The thing that I would reiterate here, though, is that there's still a number of people that we continue to strive to reach out to, continue to try to convince of the value proposition. And if there's no other message that um, you were to take away if you are a carrier today and aren't working with us, is that this will become one of the most important things that you can provide to your subscribers who are our users. And to the extent that we can cooperate to find interesting ways to bring that experience to them, that's both cost-effective and value-added. Um, we hope and encourage that you guys do that. The thing about mobile is that it's a fantastic force multiplier on what we otherwise normally do. What that means is that every single person that engages on mobile engages in the overall experience two times as much. Two times as many pages, two times as many interactions, two times as many consumption and production events. This isn't just, again, an opportunity for us, but it's an opportunity for people to figure out how to upgrade into better handsets, for us to figure out how to upgrade people into consuming and using more data. The point is that this is a great leader and teaser for all of us. 
as we've started to really push mobile, what we've also seen is that um, there's some really interesting countries that have shown some foundational things around their usage patterns with our product. You know, there's the usual suspects in terms of the people that use Facebook a lot, US, Canada, UK. But out of nowhere last year, Indonesia became one of our most important markets. And in fact, in Indonesia, literally every single person there uses Facebook over mobile. And it's the web that's actually in many ways subservient in usage to the mobile experience. At the same time, in some countries, your experience with the mobile internet first and foremost happens actually with Facebook. And so again, there's an opportunity I think that um, we can all take to make that experience that much more compelling. So our strategy can be summarized very simply in sort of three key themes. The first is around our mobile sites. We have two simple sites. One is a you know, traditional mobile internet site, m.facebook.com. The second is one that we've optimized for touch experiences. And the great thing is, over the last year and a half, our team has been working on internationalizing our product so that in as many markets as possible, you can consume it in your native language. And it's not just consuming it in a very um, high level implementation of a language, but it's colloquial in as many cases as possible. We've now translated the site into languages that are spoken by 98% of the world's population. So the point is, this is a credible, relevant experience to everybody. And we hope to continue to push that forward. And as we do that, we think the, the websites, MDOT and Touch, become a really credible way to browse and use the mobile web. We've also gotten to the point now where you can actually provision and self-service yourself without even talking to any one of us in Palo Alto. Come to the website, in about 48 hours you can be up and running. The point is we try to make it as frictionless as possible for you to get this into the hands of our users, your subscribers. We've also been working on a very powerful SMS product. The idea here is that we wanted to decompose Facebook into such an elemental form that it could happen and you could use the entire product seamlessly to get you know, 90% of the value just over text. The point is you can now send status updates and messages to our FBook shortcode. You can receive notifications and messages. You can respond to feedback. You can initiate commentary. And you can do that now, again, 32 countries, 80 operators. But the point here, there's still room to grow. And as we sort of grow our user base and as we grow the percentage of those people that use mobile, we hope that this basically gets to 100% of the available sort of mobile population. And then there's a lot of work that we do on devices. The work that we do on devices really cuts across two very specific tracks of work. The first is that on very key platforms, we make sure that we are building the best integrated experience possible. We had a developer build the example here, which is the iPhone app. We have implementations on Nokia, RIM, uh, Android, etc. At the same time, for these key platforms, we are constantly trying to improve the level of integration of our services so that it's not just about the app, but it's about how Facebook DNA is threaded into the core operating system, into the core navigation and usability of the device. And the reason we're doing this is because, again, we think that as our user base grows and as this behavior becomes widespread and ubiquitous, this can become a compelling differentiator for why a manufacturer chooses to build a specific device, why a carrier chooses to carry a specific handset, and how we can then help connect the loop and drive that through to the user. So specifically, I wanted to talk about two new things that um, I think are really compelling. Last year, we did a trial with Vodafone UK. And this message is largely for carriers, but I think it also has implications to device manufacturers. In this trial, what we allowed Vodafone UK subscribers to do was for a period of time, in this specific case it was one week, the ability to use the entire Facebook experience on m.facebook.com for free. And what we saw was what we thought we would see, which is a spike in usage. But the most interesting thing happened after that week. And that was that the number of people that were paying and using data plans increased by 20% from the people that were actually tried. So we had the following takeaway. This is an amazing teaser. If you're trying to get someone to upgrade from, say, a feature phone into a smartphone, wouldn't the ability to zero rate Facebook so that you can give them a really compelling experience, allow them to browse mobile data, get them hooked, 
and then show that progression a great thing. If you had already someone on a smartphone, but they weren't necessarily using their data plans, or they weren't necessarily using the mobile browser as, as much as they could, wouldn't this be a great way for us to reinforce the fact that they've upgraded that device? So no matter how you look at it, we thought that this is actually a really compelling thing that every carrier should be able to take advantage of. And so last week, we finished something that we're really proud to talk about, which is Facebook Zero. Facebook Zero is basically all the great Facebook things that you get at zero calories. Um, but the idea here is that this is a stripped down, text only version of our site. It's subdomained under one very simple tractable URL that your billing system should be able to understand. And now what you can do is you can zero rate this for as long as you want to all of your users. And we think what that does is actually add a lot of value to their general consumption and experience as a subscriber. And at the same time, we've created the right hook so that you can transition fairly elegantly from a free experience to the paid experience without catching people off guard. But the point here is that Facebook Zero should be now a toolkit, an element in your arsenal to basically drive retention, drive ARPU, and get what we think is one of the best mobile experiences out there into the hands of every single person possible. Last year, we announced a really important strategic project for us called Facebook Connect. At the highest level of sort of our company's vision of how we think the internet will evolve, Connect, we intend to make one of these underlying foundational elements that's everywhere. At the same time, in the fall of last year, we announced that we built some simple libraries to extend Facebook for the mobile, Facebook Connect for the mobile internet. So that if you're a mobile developer, you can basically build some really cool apps that leverage Facebook Connect. It allows you to get your friends, it allows you to get a lot of social data, it allows you to map the graph, it allows you to publish and get distribution for uh, your stories. Over the next few months, we're going to continue to improve that Connect for the mobile web experience. But working with many of the key OEMs, we intend to provide some foundational core native libraries so that Connect is baked in at the core in as many phones as possible. Again, as I said earlier, we really want to make this thing part of the DNA of the device. And we think that when it is there, it can unlock some amazing capabilities, whether it's a device that's now more differentiated, or whether now it's a developer who can basically have a single sign-on process where they can basically off and get data without having to ask people to log in multiple times across multiple apps. The point is that we think this is going to have really big implications for how the application ecosystem develops. And we want to try to play as important a role as possible. So I just want to end with um, a few uh, thoughts to wrap up. Starting this year and over the next two to three years, we're going to really push the envelope for users. What we do on the web, we're going to elegantly translate to mobile. And in fact, mobile is going to be now a, a lead driver of some key features like location um, that hadn't existed before. We're also going to differentiate across geographies. You'll see QR code libraries launch in Japan. You'll see fanning by SMS launch in the United States. The point is, these are all types of things that we're going to really double down and invest in. Continue to make that experience better so that as our user base grows, the capabilities of our mobile experiences grow. Through things like zero rating, we want to make sure that we're differentiating and giving every carrier and operator in the world the ability to differentiate themselves relative to their competitors. We think that Facebook is a phenomenal teaser that can be used to either upgrade devices or upgrade plans. And we encourage all of you guys to figure out how to use Facebook Zero, as well as the main site as part of your core marketing strategy. As I said earlier, for device manufacturers, I just want to reiterate, we're going to continue to build some really deep experiences. And we want to get our DNA baked in as deep into the OS as possible. We think this is really important for how you will differentiate your device, but also for how we can unlock value for obviously users and also carriers. And then lastly, these connect libraries, as they become more prevalent and pervasive, we think will create an amazing opportunity for developers. And we hope that this creates the next sort of big wave of ecosystem iteration in mobile apps.
I would encourage all of you guys, to the extent you have any follow-up questions, to email us, mobilebusiness at facebook.com. I'm happy to connect you guys to the right people on our team. Um, and I just want to end by just giving you guys a profound thanks. Uh, we would not be here if it weren't for the cooperation and work with many of you in this room. We acknowledge it. We appreciate it. We're going to continue to work super hard to build what we think is a phenomenally ubiquitous experience. And as we cross a billion users and beyond, we hope that we can work with you guys to basically spread this to as many people as possible wherever they are. Thank you.